This is probably the best Linux notebook on the market. Let's check it out. Dave Taylor here and I'm checking out this. This is gorgeous. This is the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Generation 8 Intel uh, notebook running Linux. So you can see it's super small. It is thin, has a nice 14 inch screen. It weighs almost nothing. It has a built-in SIM card so you can use it on cellular networks. There's so much to like about this. So let's run down the specs. Then I'll give you some demos and performance benchmarks and then I'll talk about its pretty staggering price. Okay, Intel i5 10210U processor, which is 1.6 gigahertz, goes up to 4.2 gigahertz with Turbo Boost, and it is four cores, eight threads, and six megabyte cache. And it's running, you can get two different options here. Of course, you can get lots of Windows versions, but you can get Linux, this is Ubuntu Desktop 20.04, or if you're a Fedora fan, you can get Fedora 32 Workstation. The screen is a 14 inch FHD screen, and I guess I should log in, there's not much to see here. Um, let me log in and there's a little bit you can see there. And so this is a 14 inch FHD screen running at 1920 by 1080. So it's not super high res, but it's crystal clear, anti-glare, 400 nits brightness. So again, not super monster bright, but still very, very usable. And eight gig of memory, if you wanna update that to 16 gig, you don't really need to for Linux, but if you're gonna run Windows, 16 gig is gonna give you better results. 16 gig will cost you an additional 149 bucks. I know we're gonna talk about price in a little bit. Battery, it's a 51 watt hour. That's a big battery for something, especially something this light. It's just like really, really light. But the battery gives you 14 to 18 hours of battery life, depending of course on what you're doing and whether you're really pushing on that CPU. Uh, 256 gig SSD drive is the default. You can get a bigger one, it costs more. <laughs> and the built-in 720p webcam, there's a fingerprint reader, there's a backlit keyboard, um, it's Wi-Fi 6, which means you have 802.11ax and Bluetooth 5.1, so it's really like just state-of-the-art, it's the latest everything from Lenovo. There's really not much this doesn't have. Heck, it even has Dolby Atmos, so if you want to listen to music, it's going to sound really pretty decent, and that also applies when you plug in headphones, so it's going to really give you some nice results. So, let me give you the size, then we'll do a port tour down the sides, then we'll switch to the screen and we'll go through some demos, okay? so. First off, the size of this, it is 12.7 by 8.5 inches by 6 tenths of an inch, and it's 2.4 pounds. This is approximately, I would estimate, the same as like a MacBook Air, but it's a pretty screaming piece of hardware. And port tour. Well, let's start on the left side. Going down the left side, you have USB-C. There's actually multiple Thunderbolt 3 connectors is what those are then Ethernet, an extension connector, Gen 2, USB 3.2, Gen 1, and then HDMI, and an audio connector on that side. Then let's switch to the right-hand side. It's a little bit less involved on this side. This is a mini security lock, also known often as the Kensington lock. And there is the USB 3.2. That's an always-on connector if you want to have something like a light plugged in and then the power button. The power button's in kind of a funny location because most laptops seem to have it on the surface as part of the keyboard design. So having it not only on the side, but down two thirds of the way along the right hand side means you're gonna have to recalibrate. And there's a number of things you're gonna wanna recalibrate. I found the trackpad very confusing because the buttons on the trackpad, as you can see in this close up, are on the top, not the bottom. Now, there is the little joystick thing in the middle of the keyboard, and you can use that if you want for positioning, but I feel like that's just sort of a little retro nod to the first generation ThinkPads. People are gonna use the trackpad, but the buttons are at the top, not at the bottom, but there do seem to be special spots on the bottom. Possibly in the Windows environment, you can fine tune how the trackpad works. I just found that I was confused more than often, um, so. 
you know, it's something where you might have to get the hang of it to understand how it works. Or if you're running in Linux, it might be that you never take your hands off the keyboard itself and you just fly along in a terminal window or something. Speaking of which, let's jump on to the screen. And I gotta warn you, it was not easy to record the screen because the built-in Ubuntu screen recording software is pretty darn flaky. So I tried to sort of cobble this all together. So here's what we did. First off, let me just launch LibreOffice Calc. And you can see it's pretty screaming fast. All right, we'll close that. Now let's launch Chromium and just go to the Ubuntu site real quick. Again, super quick. Now, I downloaded a benchmark and system analysis program called Hard Info, and that's what we're gonna use for the rest of this. So first off, here's some information on the computer itself. And then we're gonna run a variety of different benchmarks, starting with Blowfish. This is actually an encryption algorithm, and you can see it just goes super fast, and then you're wondering, well, where are the results for this computer? It's at the bottom. It's the fastest of any computer that's ever been tested with this piece of software. Then we can run the nQueens benchmark. It's more complicated, it takes a couple of seconds. Again, super fast, fastest of anything recorded in hard info. Then we can try ray tracing, and then we can try Fibonacci, another encryption algorithm. And across the board, this is the fastest of any of the systems that have been tested with that piece of software. It's screamingly fast. It's really glorious. I mean, if you're running any sort of Linux, then this is gonna just fly through it. Now, if you're using it for Windows, it's obviously gonna run really fast for Windows. This is a specific Linux configuration that comes preloaded, and that's pretty handy, actually. So, what else to talk about? Well, let me show you the power plug, because I know some people really care about this. If you have 18 hours of battery life, then you really don't need to charge it too often, but it is a sort of big, clumsy, old school school sort of charger where you have the wire on the out one edge that goes to the AC plug and then the other edge goes into the USB-C so it's all entirely functional it's just not very pretty maybe you don't really care that's fine <laughs> um, so what else to talk about well the trackpad is a bit problematic for me. I would probably tend to actually plug in an external um, pointing device of some sort just to sort of not get constantly confused about what's a left click and what's a right click. Over time, I think you would get more used to it and get to, you know, to the point where you didn't even notice and it just was part of your interaction. So maybe that's not a really big gripe. But the biggest complaint I have is that it's a pretty staggering price, and I think Lenovo knows that. And we'll get there in just a second, but before I talk about the price, I'm going to ask if you can subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate when you do that, and it's really helpful because the more subscribers I have, the more cool gear I get so that I can actually review it, and I'm really candid and honest. So, <laughs> all right, well, this is the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 8, and it is $2,145, but right now at Lenovo.com, they're running a promo that drops it down to $1,179.75. So even at $1,100, this is maybe a little bit expensive. It is a beautiful piece of hardware. It is super light, but it also has that really funky trackpad and it's also just running at, you know, um, what is it, 1920 by 1080, so that's only 1080p. It's not a really high res screen. If you wanna get more memory, if you wanna get a higher resolution screen, if you wanna get a bigger, you know, storage unit, then all of those increment that cost. You could spend $3,000 on this laptop without the current promo pricing. So at $2,100, I would definitely say no. There are cheaper devices you can just boot native into Linux and have a great experience. At the $1,100, maybe that's actually a decent price. This is really a solid option. And I think this is a computer that has the performance that's gonna keep you real happy if you're doing things like compiling software 
but it's also going to be something that's going to give you really good results over years of use. So there's lots to like if you're a Lenovo fan, if you're looking for a native Linux laptop, this is a really great option. And it's just, it's beautiful. It's light. The carbon on the outside, it's a carbon surface that they have, is just really pretty and lots to like. It is expensive and there are some drawbacks, but now you know the pros and the cons so you can make up your own mind. And that's really what you're gonna do anyway, right? <laughs> all right, well, cool. That's all I got. So I will hope to see you in my next video.